thank you so much for making the time and for joining us. I'm, I'm sure this will be fantastic. Uh, so everybody, uh, we have today Muhammad Ali, who is the Chief Operating Officer of the uh, Monster uh, IBM Consulting, who is really on to, so, to doing some cool new things. The title topic is how generative AI is disrupting the IT consulting industry as we know it. Uh, for uh, those that are members of sales community, thanks. Uh, Tucker, you can maybe put the uh, free link on. Uh, you can uh, go to salescommunity.com slash whatever is winter free, get a, get a free membership. And uh, I've got lo lots of great um, tech uh, industry leaders on there on our advisory board, uh, Mohammed, thank you, and uh, others. Uh, we're also sponsored by Alexander Group, who's the uh, go-to-market and sales comp sponsor of sales community. And uh, Mohammed, I think you said you had uh, used No Alexander Group and used them back in your uh, IDG days? I do, yeah. Excellent. I assume it was uh, good, wor worthwhile, helpful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. Um, so Mohammed lives in the uh, Boston area uh, in Arlington. And uh, we had originally met back when he was uh, chief strategy officer at uh, HP. And then I think after, after I left, your charter was splitting the company and um, I think uh, uh, helping get in place $13 billion or so of uh of cost savings initiatives, but certainly um, I'd say for a strategy person, take this as a compliment. Uh, Mohammed is always kind of very hands-on. He could get in the weeds. Typically a lot of strategy people, no pun intended, are kind of in the clouds and kind of have these ideas which aren't necessarily built in kind of fact or what reality could be. And I always found uh, Mohammed to be uh, very, very practical and helpful and, and useful. So. Uh, perceptions, reality, uh, great, great, great experience. We for sure. And um, also have some uh, nice intro comments from some uh, mutual friends. Uh, BJ Jenkins, who's president of Palo Alto, says I've had the opportunity to work with Muhammad as a competitor and as a partner. So competitor when you're at a uh, Carbonite and he was at a uh, Barracuda. First word uh, I would use is respect for everything he does. The second is I love being a partner now with him rather than being a competitor. <laughs> I do as well. <laughs> I do there you go. He's uh, a great partner. By the way. He's a great leader, uh, driven by doing uh, big, impactful things. He thinks big. He's a strong communicator who delivers on what he says. And finally, he's driven to delivering outcomes for customers. It's an honor and pleasure to work with him. Uh, from uh, Crawford Del Pret, uh, who's a long, long time, uh, looked at, I think he's almost th 35 years with uh, IDC, I mm -hmm. I IDG and uh, you know, great, great leader himself, says Mohammed is a, a key player in the worldwide and Boston tech scene. He's held CEO positions, Carbonite IGG, also serves on the board of uh, iRobot, Oxfam, and uh, he didn't Shine. include it, but also Henry Shine. And um, so you, you actually a, a iRobot customer as well? I, I'm a big iRobot customer. I have seven of these Roombas. Oh, nice. Perfect. Um, and uh, I, he goes on to say at IDG, he led a key chapter of the company's transformation from digital media to an intent based marketing company. At IDC, he oversaw the investment in next generation data with the creation of its graph database, the knowledge platform, which allows tech companies to quickly target new markets for growth. Now at IBM, he's enabling customers to think about how to intelligently scale their businesses with AI. He's also a great human, championing important causes such as diversity, inclusion, and equity. And uh, finally, from Dave Donatelli, who uh, we worked with at uh, HP, now CEO of Riverbed, says Muhammad is a great guy and versatile leader, universally liked by all people he works with. Muhammad was equally adept at managing strategy for HP and as CEO of Industry Stall Rate IDC, and now uh, running consulting for IBM, IBM Consulting. So. Very uh, kind of you. There you go. Good, and good you know, you. when it comes to Dave, it's honest, right? Because he, you know, he he doesn't give you a compliment. <laughs> He's serious about it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, well said. He has to. <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 yeah, well said. Dave's great. Love him. Totally good. Uh, so anyway, uh, so uh, IBM Consulting, so massive organization, 160,000 consultants. Um, so if you can kind of briefly, uh, which is hard to do, um, kind of explain what uh, IBM Consulting does. Sure. No, happy to. So IBM Consulting is sort of a full service 
IT organization, right? So we do everything from help you de determine your strategy for building your new app to figuring out how to standardize on SAP, um, you know, wide range of, of projects, right? Sort of the concept phase. Uh, then we'll help you implement it. We'll write the code, we'll test the code, we'll deploy the code, and then at times we'll help you run it, um, you know, on an ongoing uh, relationship. And so, uh, you know, it's sort of soup to nuts. And of course, uh, you know, recently we've been deploying Gen AI to improve all aspects of that. We actually have a methodology called the IBM Garage that allows us to, you know, do these workshops at the beginning to figure out, well, what what are the valuable things for you to build? Yeah, we know you want to build an app. Well, what you know, what are the valuable aspects, uh, the things that are going to drive your business? And so we sort of co-create that, and then we go and co-build it, uh, and then we go and co-operate it. Right. So those are the, the that's the garage methodology, and it covers sort of end to end what we do for clients. Of course, you know. We, we have to do all those nuts and bolts things that every services company ha has to do, but, but that's the business. Well, that's uh, very impressive. And we'll uh, chime in here as we get uh, comments and questions. Uh, Ken Grow, we always mentioned in our prep is um, uh, runs uh, sales at uh, Taos, uh, one of the IBM divisions. And he says, wow, since Mohammed joined IBM consulting, our customers have witnessed improved customer centricity and speed. Hashtag all gas, no brakes. <laughs> right. Well, you know, actually, so I'm really glad that Ken mentioned that. And I really can't take credit for it, right? So I get here a little over four and a half months ago, and I realized I'd stumbled onto a gem. It turns out that IBM Consulting for the last two quarters has been the fastest growing large consulting business on the planet. And wow. um, I, I mean, you know, I tell you, when I left here 15 years ago, I can say that, right? There were some fierce competition. And uh, now I happen to be part of an organization that is performing extraordinarily well. And as Ken says, it's really all gas, no brakes. Um, and it's really only going to accelerate with Gen AI. There you go. Is, it, is that an IBM saying or is that something Ken just made up? <laughs> I don't know, but I like it. There you go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Now, from a scale perspective, I mean, you've got some of your customers are hundreds of millions of dollars, these projects, correct? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's pretty common. Wow. That's that's amazing. And from a, a selling perspective, I mean, far, far different than, you know, a, a carbonite sales process. We might have a, you know, one, one call close. I mean, this is kind of a massive, you really need to kind of invest in some of these sales cycles. So maybe you can kind of touch on uh the sales process. Sure, Randy. Um, you, you know, you, you're a you're a sales expert, right? I've always gone to you for advice on a variety of things, and you know that you know different businesses have very different sales motions. So, at Carbonite, it was a fifty nine ninety nine per year product. It was D to C, right? And so the the sales tactics, how, how how customers buy, were completely different. Here, we're doing massive projects, and I'll tell you about one of those projects and you'll get a sense. So we recently announced that our team, IBM Consulting, had been selected to provide all the cybersecurity uh, for, for NATO. And, you know, I mean, this is NATO, right? <laughs> it's like a yeah. pretty serious organization protecting the world. And, um, and, and you know, you know, we're, we're going to be uh, doing that uh, for them and with them. That doesn't happen overnight. It takes years of relationship building. I mean, you know, in some cases, it takes decades of um, of experience with each other, right? And in this case, you know, IBM's been doing security in government and sensitive areas for a long time. Uh, you know, they trust us. We had a chance to engage. There's very long definition of what the scope should be. Uh, there's back and forth. I mean, these things, you know, this, a sales cycle of 12 months for something like that, you know, could, could be on the short side, right? I mean, th these these are elongated sales cycle. They require a lot of touch points, and you know, some of the some of the things that you've taught me over the years, we we definitely apply in these types of engagement. 
uh, massive. And at the same time, too, you, you have to kind of figure out which ones you're not going to pursue based on a bunch of different criteria. But I mean, some of these pursuits, the NATO, NATO pursuit is an example from, if you could say, from the time you, you know, first started, you know, courting them or talking to them until you got kind of the order, how long was that? You know, I don't know exactly, but I'm betting that it's somewhere between a year and two years. Right? Think yeah. about that. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, a amazing for sure. Um, and then from a recruiting perspective, um, are there kind of openings that you have in case you want to do a little commercial? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, we're always looking for great people. Um, and, um, you know, one of the things that that I'm doing right now is um, uh, I'm, I'm heavily focused on expanding our cybersecurity business, right? We have a very, very strong cyber business. I, as I mentioned, things like NATO, you know, we've done, we just did this, um, this partnership with uh, Palo, Palo Alto Networks and got a chance to finally work with BJ as opposed to work against BJ. Um, and, uh, and we're recruiting, recruiting pretty heavily for that business. Uh, I'm also, uh, you know, building out an asset-based consulting capability, and we're recruiting people, who, you know, who can help us build those assets. And of course, in every one of our practices, our SAP practice, our Azure practice, our AWS practice, our GCP practice, our Oracle practice, our Salesforce practice, they're all growing, um, and uh, and you know, we're recruiting accordingly. Well, so your uh, your headcount round numbers, I think, is uh, about one hundred and sixty thousand. Uh, when I was at HP, I think I had four thousand. I thought that was that was a lot. How, how the heck do you manage and lead one hundred sixty thousand folks? Well, you know, you you don't have to manage them all, right? I mean, you have you know you have a management team and uh, and and you rely on them to do to do a good job. Uh, you hire the best people, and luckily, I've been able to uh, you know come in and. Uh, and, and work with some great people. Um, but to your earlier point, we're also hiring. Uh, you know, we just we just got the um, the acceptance from a leader that we'll probably we'll announce over the next two months. Just amazing, amazing uh, leader. He'll be he'll be uh, working for me. Um, and you know, I have to say that um, the strong growth that IBM Consulting has been seeing uh, over the last few quarters. Uh, is um, attracts people, right? I mean, people are calling us; they want to come join us, and so so it's been great. But uh, but in terms of management, uh, you know, you, you have to you have to rely on having talented leaders uh, work with you, and, and that's what I do. Oh, that, that's great. I guess uh, given e Elon Musk's uh, AI public initiatives, he'd be uh, probably well served to kind of park it with uh, IBM Consulting. If Elon wants to do more work with us, we're happy to. <laughs> Perfect. Now you have um, a new offering called IBM Consulting Advantage, which is an AI services platform and library of assistance to empower the consultants. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So, I mean, it's no surprise to everybody that AI is changing pretty much every aspect of our lives, right? Um, from, you know, simple things like, being able to craft a, an email to um, uh, looking at security logs and quickly identifying where you know what's an intrusion, right? So across the board. So naturally, our clients and you know our clients are some of the world's largest companies, some of the uh, most sophisticated governments and institutions. Uh, they've come to us and they've said, well. You know, we want to determine how to leverage Gen AI for you know some of our business processes, and so we've been helping them with that. You know, we have several hundred pilots that we've been doing some have gone to production, and if you think about the market out there, we're not the only ones. We're not the only consulting company that's helping these clients, right? So all of our competitors are doing the same thing. So there are literally thousands of these Gen AI pilots. And one of the things that was, you know, when I when I got involved in this, uh, you know, almost five months ago, I realized that every one of these is being done a little bit differently, and this could be a problem. Like we need to bring consistency to this, and a big part of why we need to bring consistency to this is because um, it's not just about 
building these great solutions that'll take out 50% cost or 30% cost or 80% cost. You need to secure them. You need to govern them so they do what they're supposed to do. These are AI things, right? Uh, you need to protect personal information. You have to check for bias. Um, and so as a result, we decided to build IBM Consulting Advantage, which is a consistent approach to building these solutions that our 160,000 uh, consultants and engineers can use. And so that was sort of the, the, the idea behind it. And as you mentioned, we just recently announced it. That's great. So um, the whole gen, uh, generative AI initiative that you're driving there with IBM Consulting obviously has had you know impressive growth rates already, but you're really, you, you don't think of IBM as kind of, I'll say breaking glass, right? But you're really breaking glass, disrupting this, this industry. Um, yeah, I mean, this industry is going to change. It's going to change dramatically. Like the consulting market, the services market is not going to stay this heavy labor-based manual, um, you know, manually configured um, project plan oriented business uh, through this Gen AI transition, it's going to change. I don't think anybody knows exactly how it's gonna change, but it's gonna be highly disruptive. Um, you know, in the same way, you know, Uber's disrupted the taxi business, Gen AI in some form is gonna disrupt the consulting business. And so what we're trying to do is get ahead of it, right? Um, why not use some of these technologies to disrupt the way we operate and get to a point where we're operating far more efficiently? Uh, you know, there'll be a lot of ups and downs through this. And, um, and I think what we can't do is pretend it's not going to happen. So right. we've decided right. that it's going to happen and we're gonna do everything we can to, to move as fast as possible and lead. Oh, that's amazing. And um, for those uh, watching along or listening along, feel free to chime in with any other uh, kind of comments or questions as, as well. And we got Tucker behind the scenes as always. So thanks, Tucker. He'll, uh, he'll pull him up. So with all this, I mean, the, the, the productivity improvements are just just massive, right? Yeah. I mean, we're seeing, you know, in some of the projects that we're doing, we're seeing just ex extraordinary uh, productivity improvements. But it's not just us. You know, if you are our, our part, our our competitors are seeing the same thing um, you know, what they're doing. Our clients who are experimenting themselves are seeing the same thing. So, you know, I'll give you an example. So um, a large national organization that provides health care to its citizens came to us and said, hey, we have this app. And, uh, you know, our citizens use this app to schedule a doctor's appointment, to um, sign up for vaccines, et cetera, et cetera. And we would like um, this app, and if, and if they can't get the thing done on the app, then they have to call us. So we would like you to help us use Gen AI to improve the conversion rate or the, or the task completion on the app so that it deflects these phone calls to us. And so we said, okay, you know, we'll go build that for you because it's a long time existing client. And um, you know, that's what we do for them. And so we said, but can we just try something? We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna have two teams build this. We're gonna have a team, and that team, we're gonna, um, we're gonna do it the traditional way, it's be labor based, they're gonna use traditional tools. And this other team, they're gonna have all those regular tools, or we're gonna give them four Gen AI assistants, right? And let's see what the difference is. And so the four Gen AI assistants that we gave them. And these four Gen AI assistants live in IBM Consulting Advantage. Um, they are, uh, you know, within the IBM Consulting Assistance subcategory there. So the four were, and, 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 they, and they work seven by twenty-four. They do, yes, right? yeah. <laughs> yes. I, you know, even they don't even need coffee breaks. Uh, right. So, so what we did was we took these four and we paired them with four categories of engineers. So the first category was the person who was um, doing the persona design. So, you know, if you're building this app and it's gonna be used by these citizens, some of the citizens could be you know, a young woman, a another citizen could be an older man, a third could be somebody with, you know, extraordinary health issues, right? Different personas. So we, we have this assistant that one of our engineers uses 
and says, here's the app we're trying to build. Can you please generate the personas? And it generates the personas. Then you switch to another assistant and you cut and paste one of those personas into it. And that assistant is the user story assistant. So for this persona, what are the user stories? And it generates the user stories. Now, of course, we still have to have an engineer that looks at this and says, yes, that makes sense. Right. But once, once that's okay, then you switch to a third assistant. And you say, here, take this user story and generate the Python code. And it generates the Python code. And you check it, make sure it's right. And then you go to a fourth assistant. And that assistant is a unit test assistant. And so you, you cut the code and you put it in there and it generates the unit test. Of course, you've got to check it. When we did this side by side, the team that used the four IBM consulting assistants did it in 52% less time than the first team, and the quality was identical. And so, um, you know, those are the kinds, you're not going to see this on every uh, uh, use case, right? In some use cases, you'll get 5% productivity improved, some you'll get 90, but for that particular one, we saw this. And so, I don't think it's just us seeing this, like a lot of people are seeing this. And so now the question going into 2024 is how do you take these types of pilots and scale them? Yeah. So going into production, then obviously you have the security governance issues. So any any other uh, kind of uh, issues or concerns and uh, yeah. not having more production? Uh, yeah. So security governance, PII bias this is a big issue, huge issue. Um, there's also another issue, cost, right? We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But in terms of the security issue, uh, you know, IBM does, as you know, right? You are at HP. Like these com our, our companies do these studies. We love these studies. So we go out and we survey all these CEOs and CXOs. And so a very large sample set, we asked the question, um, we asked this question about security and AI. And so 98% of them, 98% said that they expect that with Gen AI, there'll be a higher likelihood of a security breach over the next three years. And then almost 70% of them said that even with that risk, we're gonna do it anyway, right? We're gonna do it anyway. And it makes sense because they can't not take those productivity gains, right? Because some smaller company is gonna come along using those productivity gains and put them out of business. So for some companies, it could be an existential question here. So they're going to do it anyway, and then we're going to have to help them secure it. And so that's why, you know, we have these partnerships with Palo Alto um, and, and others in order to build the right security framework around the Gen AI. So inside of IBM Consulting Advantage, we are embedding some of these best practices around security, around governance, around you know, bias protection, uh, um, PII protection, et cetera. Um, so, so that's a very, very important category in order to be able to scale this. Of course, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you've heard, Randy, that you know, using all these tokens could be expensive. And that's, that's a, a second part of, of what we're working with clients on. Perfect. Um, so we have from a LinkedIn user, uh, it really does feel like we're at the cusp of the AI revolution, or maybe it's already here, probably already here. Uh, Mohammed loved hearing about the hospital app use case. As a sales rep, I have to ask, can you share what kind of AI and sales initiatives uh, is IBM Consulting innovating on? As a side note, I've got uh, Jen Quinlan coming on uh, in, in, in end of March, so I think she, she handles some of this as well. Yeah, so great question. So of course, we have what we call a customer transformation practice, and that's where we help clients deploy things like Salesforce and, and other customer engagement uh, tools and methodologies. And as you know, uh, you know we've been collab collaborating with Salesforce for quite some time now as we do these, IBM Consulting do these deployments. Uh, we have um, access to a wide variety of AI uh, tools and techniques to supplement uh, uh, the, um, the, you know, the Salesforce deployment, right? So Salesforce has native capabilities in Einstein, right? But then, you know, we also build these, you know, these specialized um, uh, uh, capabilities uh, to add to Salesforce, right? Because 
a client might might come along and say, hey, you know, this is great, but I, I really need something smart to look at all the touch points that we have and match it up to the buyer, uh, the buyer team at the company, right? Because as you, as Randy, as you know, for some of these complex deals, you're not selling to one person, you're selling to an entire buyer team of maybe 17, 20 people, right? So how do you build a smart Gen AI? So we might use um, Llama, you know, from, from Meta as the foundation model to build such a capability. We might use Granite from IBM Watson X. We might do something from, from Amazon, like whatever the right foundation model is for that particular use case, we'll bring that to the table. So in some ways, we're sort of deploying hybrid AI to bring these, um, these, these smart um, uh, models uh, and, and build applications, on, mini applications on top of them that we call assistants, and then plugging those assistants into the platform. And in this case, it's the Salesforce platform or whatever your go-to-market platform is. Uh, so that's how we're applying it. And um, it, it, it's, it's a great question because, uh, you know, as, as you know, I think Randy and, and, and I think some of the audience member knows, uh, client, customer engagement is a ripe, ripe, ripe opportunity for Gen AI. You know, all the way from, you know, how do you, how do you send emails that, are, that, that you have higher open rates on to how do you do more sophisticated things like that example I gave of the entire buying, uh, a, 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 you know, buying team at the client. Yeah, well, wow, amazing. And um, just uh, moving on here, just yeah, fantastic there on the whole the disruption there in the cons consulting industry for sure. But um, you're in the Middle East last week. You mean just tons of money flowing in? It's almost like a, you know, if you think about you know startup companies disrupting the the tech world, it's almost like the Middle East with all the money is kind of disrupting just traditional countries and structures and what they're doing and how they're doing it, right? Yeah, I mean, I tell you, the the, the Middle East has, has become a pretty remarkable area. You know, I was um, I was uh, in in Riyadh and Dubai, and if you think about Dubai. <laughs> It wasn't that long ago that you know the United Arab Emirates was basically a pearl diving town, right? That's yeah. how, that was their economy, and, and it actually was really tough because um, you know at some point the Japanese uh, created artificial pearl and their economy just tanked, and then they had to figure out what to do. And Dubai, in particular, um, wasn't necessarily sitting in a whole lot of oil like Abu Dhabi, and so. Dubai had to reinvent itself. And, you know, you've been there, Andy. I mean, it is a pretty remarkable place. And, you know, they pride themselves on having, you know, the tallest thing and, the, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the, the most uh, um, extravagant um, uh, structures and buildings and restaurants and so forth. They, they also are leaning in heavily on technology. And everywhere you go, there is new technology. They're willing to to, to invest. And in some ways it's a showcase, right? It's, it's a trial location for a lot of the technology that, you know, uh, that our companies create. Uh, and Saudi Arabia is sort of becoming like that, right? They're building this brand new city called Neom that is a linear city. It's, um, it, it's remarkable. And they're willing to try all these uh, uh, pieces of technology. And of course, you know, you need companies that have a lot of experience to do this in a responsible way, because it's very easy to do things that become highly problematic, that have security issues, that you know violate a variety of, of, of standards. And so, you know, we've been working with them not just to bring the technology to the applications, but also do so in a responsible way. Wow, amazing. And uh, Ken uh, follows up here, uh, I don't know what your, your thoughts are, but saying that within large companies, the first kind of AI play is usually within kind of marketing or the HR functions. Do you, do you find that the case? Yeah, so I, for us, there are really three big categories. So customer transformation, which is uh, uh, this area that, that Ken just mentioned. The second is employee experience. Uh, We've, we've actually seen, we, we've even within IBM, we've deployed a fair amount of, um, of, of AI technology. We have something called Ask HR, where um, you, know, you can do simple transaction, like transferring an employee from 
one manager to another manager, which, you know, used to take like, you know, a bunch of time to go into work there or whatever and, um, and, and move the employee. Now you could just chat with Ask HR and, and it does it. That, that, you know, we now complete about 92% of our HR transaction through Ask HR. So the second category being, you know, employment and employee engagement. And then the third area that we've seen a lot of growth has been in code coding, code generation, right? And so the example I gave you about the app development for that, um, for that, uh, uh, you know, uh, medical company or, or medical entity uh, or healthcare entity, sorry, uh, that was a code development um, uh, uh, opportunity. And so that that area, I, I think, is going to continue to see a lot of growth. Wow, amazing. What about any uh, mentors that you've had uh, along the way or a specific advice that there's kind of one or two that stick with you? Yeah. So, Randy, I, you know, I've been really, really lucky to have great managers. And so, I, you know, what I'd say to, uh, to people at whatever point in your career you are, if you don't have a great manager, go find a great manager. And in some ways, that's why I came back to IBM. I mean, you know, Arvind Krishna, who's now CEO, and I were peers for four years. I know he's a great manager. And so working for somebody like that, uh, you know, I know we're going to make progress. Oh, fantastic there for sure. Um, what about any advice you'd give to your younger self? Not that you're not young, of course. <laughs> well, my younger self, you know, I, I, I have to say that when I was younger, I, I took things a little too seriously. And I was, I was too worried about internal politics and this sort of thing. And at the end of the day, you know, I think if you, if you just focus on doing a great job and love what you do, you'll do well. And, um, you know, these things that cost you, cause you stress, and, you know, in any organization, there are these, uh, you know, these individuals that you go home and you just can't stop thinking about it and you stew over it and, and you know, you write an email that you shouldn't write, right? you know, just avoid all that stuff. Like, and it's, it's a lot easier to say now that I'm on this side, right. and, you know, when I was younger, it was, it was hard to do, but I have to say there was really no value in those things and they really distracted. And, and at times I've seen those kinds of things really derail people, people who are really, really good people. And, you know, you want to focus on what you do well and leave everything else behind. Yeah. So you're obviously trying to uh, kind of, I'll say, speed up the pace with, uh, you know, IBM Consulting, any any large organization, you know, things always takes a long time to get done. You know, people, you know, complain, no, you know, I'm not saying IBM Consulting, but just, you know, big, big companies in, in general. So any things that you're trying to do culturally um, to kind of get things moving, you know, f faster and better? Yeah, Randy, as I said, I've been lucky to come into an organization that is, you know, it, that is growing, that is now, you know, the fastest growing consulting company. So there's a lot of energy, a lot of momentum, a lot of willingness. You, you know, the, the IBM consulting organization is um, is sort of a high energy place. And I love that. I mean, I'm a high energy person. I want to be amongst high energy people. And so I was actually quite surprised that we were able to get the IBM Consulting Advantage platform not only developed, but but launched in, in, in a short period of time. Right. I've only been here for about five months. And, uh, you know, just earlier today, I looked at the development roadmap for it and all the releases. And it's incredible how much we're, we're adding and the pace that, that we're adding it to. So, um, I think the, the, the consulting advantage platform, though, is going to drive this whole series of cultural change uh, in that, um, uh, you know, whereas uh, we used to do things, I think you could say a lot more bespoke, we're going to we're going to need to standardize because now, you know, we're dealing with generative AI and um, and and not everybody's going to know how to control generative AI. And so I mean, consulting advantage is a mechanism for doing that. And that will drive a bunch of cultural change. Wow, that's great. <coughs> Excuse me. It's usually, usually my last question. I meant to do this in, in, in our prep, so you may, you may not have any, but I was like to say if there's any P PG Randy story that you have. PG Randy story. You know, I have to say, like, I always love every conversation I have with Randy. Not only because I learn stuff, 
but but Randy, you're always sort of pushing the envelope, right? And so, um, I, I, you know, I don't have any like dirty things to share with the audience here, right? But um, but but I have to say, I, I I've learned a lot from you. Thank you. No, thank you. I pre- appreciate it. My kind kind compliments. So, uh, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, Mohammed, you've been fantastic. Uh, Tucker, thanks for your uh, help behind the scenes, and uh, also shout out to Clay for helping us. Uh, next week, we're going to have a uh, little different uh, d- different side from the 160,000 uh, person organization. But uh, Richard Harris, who's a uh, awesome sales expert, has got a great book, The Seller's Journey. Uh, your guidebook to closing more deals with neat selling, as he calls it. So we'll uh, be able to discuss that and find out more about it. Uh, thanks to Alexander Group, who's our sponsor for today. And uh, thanks for those that are members of Sales Community. If you're not, go join. Uh, all right, Mohammed, uh, thanks. Re- really appreciate it. And uh, everybody have a great day. <laughs>